Hi there, I'm Alan Newdy for the Historical Aviation Film Unit here at the FLIR NZ Aviation Expo at the Kulfi Airfield near Hamilton, New Zealand. We're going to have a quick look at the UAV aircraft produced by Xcraft Enterprises New Zealand and here's Philip Solaris to tell us a little about the company and its designs. Xcraft Enterprises develops robotic vehicles for sea and air. So at what stage of proceedings are you? Uh, um, full production, still prototyping? No, what we do is we design and prototype and test the aircraft up to a point where they're ready for operations and uh, then we use third parties to integrate uh, the automation systems. Um, at the moment we're trialling uh, several automation um, autopilots obviously and automation systems uh, that go along with the autopilot. Um, obviously directional finding is not the only thing but uh, running the systems on the aircraft shifting ballast, shifting petrol, um, all of those sort of health systems. We're in the process of, of d getting a good system with that and uh, currently we're doing joint uh, trials with a military organisation to uh, look at the possibilities. As you know in New Zealand we're such a small nation that our military um, operate with the uh, search and rescue operations and obviously fisheries protection. Those are two areas that we're very very keen to see uh, develop. Um, you mentioned to me earlier, um, Philip, that a lot of UAV companies uh, focus um, primarily on endurance, yes. um, but uh, Xcraft isn't. It's, it's um, kind of, we, we joke about it quite often, it's the cult of E we call it, and we're not talking about the drug, uh, the cult of endurance. Um, yeah, uh, Xcraft looked at um, the issue of endurance and we actually ended up doing the same thing that Lockheed Martin did with uh, Skunk Works, which is looking at developing an airship. Uh, if you want to stay in the air three days, isn't much of a comparison to three weeks or even three months and that's where Lockheed got to as well. What is important is that uh, you solve the problem, you find the solution to the problem that you're confronted with. Um, for example, one of our small UAVs is specifically designed for um, being able to survive, being a reusable asset so that you can send it off and it can come back, uh, it can survive bad landings, it can go out to, its average uh, distance would be uh, operational distance say 20 kilometres and so that's designed for the platoon level um, uh, operation where you want quick uh, uh, information, quick reconnaissance. So therefore there's not much point in it being out there much longer. If it's got good equipment on it, it'll go to the region you want and it'll scan that region and come back to you and you can reuse that craft. Therefore there's no point in making it like a, a glider type of aircraft which you obviously would if you want extreme, you know, extended endurance. So that's the type of thing I mean. Our, our other craft and the scaling of the craft do the same thing. They look at solving problems, uh, multi-role problems quite often, but um, we don't put the first priority as endurance. Endurance comes down as part of the issue, um, part of the thing to solve. And that's, that is really important. Uh, when you're looking to solve a problem, you want to look at it holistically. And that includes manufacturing, that includes uh, maintenance, that includes your ability, all the logistics that go with that. Behind us we've got um, the X-Craft on a catapult system. Um, tell me about the catapult, what's, what's the purpose of that? Are all your systems launched via catapult? Or? Yes they are, they're all launched via catapult. We have um, uh, another ca smaller catapult system for our smaller aircraft and that can actually be it has a two-stage system, a small, uh, the short stage, which is a 2.5, which loads up to a, uh, sends off to about a 5 kg payload, an aircraft with a, a total of 5 k. We can double that to actually double the payload launch, and that's most of our small craft. But it's interesting because our catapult system was originally developed uh, looking at uh, operations in Antarctica, and therefore we had a whole lot of uh, very important issues to address. We needed to be lightweight. We didn't want to go for compressed air, which a lot of people do, because the seals start to go wrong. Also in high temperatures, if you're in Afghanistan or if you're in Antarctic, you have problems with seals. Uh, they're heavy, heavy as. Um, we wanted lightweight, we wanted, uh, we have a maxim that everything must be field replaceable in five minutes. Um, all components are easy to get hold of, easy to manufacture, um, and they ex uh, survive in extreme climates, including obviously high humidity, which is important for New Zealand. Uh, operations in the Pacific. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an evolution from finding the most simple, robust system that will achieve what you're trying to achieve. And I think that's absolutely essential in all of this. You, you know, keep it simple. 
how's business looking? I mean, are, are you happy with the way the company is going and the products are developed? Yes, we are actually. The um, the interesting thing about UAVs, uh, uh, and it's a it's a little complex because it's tied up with the costs of operating UAVs, but essentially they are money saving enterprises. Somebody quoted me a horrendous amount of um, cost of sending an Orion out per hour of what it cost to send an Orion out. Now we've got a huge area to cover in New Zealand. Now we figured and we developed a system whereby we could stack 12 of, of these type of aircraft into a Hercules, drop the tail and drop them all out and do a search and rescue pattern which, which is fully conceivable, easy to do according to our stats anyway. Um, and that would remove a huge amount of cost of search and rescue. Um, so they're money saving enterprises. Um, there have been problems in the past with regulation and luckily in New Zealand we have a very proactive uh, civil air authority um, and in conjunction with Australia they're two of the most proactive civil air authorities. Now they are making it work. They are starting uh, brand new programs of training um, uh, UAV pilots so they don't have to be a commercial air pilot that lowers your cost of operation. Um, the systems that are coming online, the autopilot systems coming online also lower that cost. So the reality is it's almost like we can't, uh, at that cost saving mission, we can't do without them, that's the way we look at it.